Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I did some thrift flips this week. You read the title. You already knew that. So let's just get started, shall we? This week, five items were chosen to receive a beautiful makeover transformation. So let's meet those lucky contestants. First up, we have this plain white tee, which currently looks straight out of 2010, but with one simple change, can be totally transformed. Next, this much beloved, voluminous, poofy sleeved blouse. Could any change possibly make her even better? Today, we're going to find out. This plain t-shirt, which was discarded by a friend in a closet cleanout. This is her shot at a comeback. This green fabric, which is adorable, but very difficult to work with. Will she finally find the perfect role to shine? And finally, these beads, which aren't actually thrifted, I'm sorry, but I got a Michaels gift card for Christmas, so I got some beads to make some DIY jewelry. All right, let's go catch up with contestant number one. We are starting with our plain white t-shirt. I thrifted this because I needed to replace another old plain white t-shirt, but the length on this one is giving late 2000s middle schooler. So you can probably guess where we're going here. We're gonna crop it. Truly the easiest way to update any very long shirt that you might already have or find at the thrift store. And I'm really not even talking like crop top length. Like for this one, just changing it from super long to like hitting just above the hip will do wonders. To start, I just traced a different fitted baby tee I have that hits at the length I wanted and cut about an inch below for seam allowance. You could also just put on the shirt you want to crop, mark on the shirt how long you want it to be, then take it off and cut at that mark. Then I did also want a clean hem, so I just pinned up the edge and hemmed it with a zigzag stitch because it's stretchy fabric. I did my best not to stretch the hem at all while I sewed so it wouldn't have that wavy hem effect. This is very hard to get right and mine still has a little wave to it, but it doesn't have to be perfect and I think the wave adds to the charm a little bit. Finally, I did also iron the seams to press them nice and cleanly. I didn't film that, but just know I did it. And I'm very proud of myself because normally I am too lazy to ever iron anything. All right, our next piece is this button up blouse with these long poofy sleeves. This shirt is amazing. If you've been on my channel before, you've probably seen it. It has been much beloved for quite some time already. And before you panic, I promise I am not destroying it or even changing it all that dramatically. I am just removing the collar. I decided to make this change because this shirt is just so voluminous already. There's like so much fabric going on in so many different places and it's already slightly oversized on me. So whenever I would wear it like partially unbuttoned, I just felt like there was so much extra fabric flapping around. So I thought removing that extra flap could make a huge difference and spoiler, it did. So let me show you how. As you can see, the color is very cleanly sewn into this sort of neckline band. So to start, I just very carefully seam ripped that band open where the collar was inserted and attached and removed it. Extremely simple. There you go. And if anyone has any suggestions on what to do with the spare collar I now have, I would love to hear them. Then we just had to stitch the neckband back up, which was very simple because the fabric was all very neatly pressed already and I could clearly see where the stitches had been before, so I just sewed a straight stitch back over that edge. And that was it! I truly could not believe how easy it was to do this and make it look clean and professional and not DIY. Maybe everyone else already knew this was a very easy alteration, but I feel like I just like hacked the universe. <laughs> And I definitely might go ahead and do this to some of my other oversized button-ups that I think would look cleaner without that extra fabric. For my next project, we are taking this plain t-shirt I got as a hand-me-down from a friend, which I of course stowed away to add a cute little graphic to. And recently, a lot of you have actually told me that you are interested in seeing more embroidery from me. so. That's what we're doing on this shirt today. For this t-shirt, I decided to just do a small graphic right in the center at the top of the shirt, similar to the mushroom embroidery I did on a different shirt in this video. But this time we're doing a shooting star because I just thought it would be cute. My first step as always is to make a sketch. This was the general idea. Then after pinning my embroidery stabilizer onto the inside of the shirt, 
not always necessary, but helpful for stretch fabric. I sketched the general placement of my design in white pencil and then got to it. I will note this time I forgot to try on the shirt first and actually mark like with chalk where exactly I wanted the design to go. I just eyeballed it in the center instead and it did end up actually being slightly off center because of that. So don't make that mistake. I'm a little salty. I'm a little annoyed, but I, I think I can even it out later with some extra stars or something. Anyway, other than that, I have to say I don't have much advice about the actual process of embroidery because I kind of just treat it like drawing, adding lines wherever I think looks right, and I definitely make lots of mistakes. For example, the star turned out a little wonky, but I think that's okay and often it just adds to the homemade charm. My general process is come up with a drawing idea, loosely sketch it onto the garment, and then just fill it in with thread. Finally, at the end, I just tore off the edges of the embroidery stabilizer on the back. And then I also ironed on some backing to cover up the embroidery threads and just keep them from like rubbing against my skin. It also protects them from, you know, getting caught on stuff in the wash. This is optional, but for all my fellow sensitive skin girlies out there, you get it. This is helpful for comfort. All right, finally, we are on to maybe the star of the entire show, this adorable thrifted green fabric. I love this fabric. The floral and cherry pattern is so cute, but I've literally had this stowed away for like two years because it is not comfortable on the skin at all. It's very stiff and papery and I just could not decide what to make with it. But finally, recently, I've been thinking about how I really want a colorful multicolored vest to add to my vest collection. And then I thought that would be a perfect use for this fabric because a vest is usually layered on top of stuff anyway, so I don't really have to feel it against my skin. So today we are making my first DIY vest. This is really gonna elevate my my beep world powers. I can feel it. DIY and vests, my two favorite things. I can't wait. So to create this vest, I took out another vest I already have that is a little big on me, but generally has a fit I like and traced its panels onto my fabric in white chalk. For this one, I traced the back panel all as one piece and then traced one of the front panels onto two layers of fabric so I could cut out both panels at once. I also made my front panels slightly smaller than the vest I was tracing because I didn't want this one to be quite so oversized. Then I went ahead and cut out my panels, and at this point I also cropped them a bit because I did also want this vest to be a little more cropped than the one I was tracing. And then it was time to attach all the pieces together. So first I pinned the shoulders and each side right sides together, and then just sewed those down, giving us the basic garment construction. And then I just needed to hem the edges. It did end up being a lot less oversized than my other vest. I think I underestimated what a difference those couple extra inches on the front panels would make, but ultimately this one ended up just fitting me more like actually my own size, which isn't what I was going for, but it still works fine. Anyway, like I said, I just hemmed the bottom, middle, and neck, and the armholes, plus I ironed them all down to be nice and clean and flat. I did think about adding like a little tie in the front to close the vest, but ultimately I really prefer wearing vests open anyway, so I decided we were finished. Who knew making a vest was that simple? I'm gonna make so many more now. Finally, this last project is back to something quite simple. And again, I do have to note these beads are not thrifted. I got them from the craft store with a gift card, but I do love finding cool beads or cool beaded stuff I can take apart at the thrift store. And I also don't think there's anything wrong with buying craft supplies new to make a little craft with. For this project, I was honestly drawn to these beads just because I really liked how they looked just strung all together. They kind of look like planets or like little beachy stones or something. I just thought the beads were pretty. And I really love a long, thin, dangly earring that's just like uniform. I made some very similar to this in my last thrift flip video. Sorry for the repetition, but that's what I wanted to do with these earrings too. I did actually play around with trying to do something else and like mismatching with other beads I had to make some like chunky mismatched beaded earrings, kind of like my necklace that I had made previously, but I just didn't quite end up liking the look of any of those with the beads that I had, and I really just liked the simplicity of just the one type of bead. So I just strung a bunch of them onto two long bead head pins, and I finally got myself some actual jewelry pliers. 
I know. Thank you. Thank you so much. I stop. So this time around, making beaded jewelry was way easier. I just used the pliers to curve the end of each head pin into a little loop and then attached them to two earring hooks. Truly cannot stress enough how much easier this was with jewelry pliers instead of what I was using before, which is tweezers and um, actual pliers. Would not recommend. Can you believe having the right tools makes your project easier and look better? Who would have thought? All right, y'all, that brings us to our grand reveals. That went by so quickly, right? Time flies when you're having fun, doing simple, quick, easy thrift flips. All right, let me show you the final products. First, we have our very long white t-shirt, now cropped to the perfect length. Like I said, this is obviously extremely simple, but it definitely modernizes this top by a decade or two and makes it much more comfortable and wearable to me. Next up, the poofy white blouse, whose collar is now removed. As you could probably already tell, I absolutely love this one, partly just because I'm proud I did a DIY that doesn't look extremely DIY, but also because it really does make this shirt so much more wearable to me. I feel better in it now, whether it's buttoned all the way up or left open, and I'm excited to style it even more now. Thrift flip number three was this plain maroon t-shirt, now decorated with the cutest little golden yellow shooting star. Ignore that it's slightly off center, okay? I think I can make it look more even by adding more little stars later, but for now, the overall effect is still very cute. I like that it looks sort of sketchy and twinkling, and it definitely just makes this shirt way more my style. Now we are onto our thrifted green fabric turned adorable little vest. I think this is so precious. I love it with this blouse and in general. For my first time ever sewing a vest, I am quite pleased with how it turned out, even if it's not exactly the oversized fit I intended. I think I'll definitely try making more in the future with different silhouettes and details added, and I think this was a solid use of this fabric. Finally, of course, we have our beaded earrings. Very simple, but I think they look quite lovely. And wow, look at those precise, expertly bent loops done with those jewelry pliers. No, but really, I am super happy with these, both in the simple but beautiful design and the very clean and neat wire bending. As always, please vote for your favorite contestant in the comments. Who do you think is the winner. Personally, I am voting for the removed collar on the poofy sleeved blouse. Her execution just really wowed me. <laughs> and if you ever do a DIY or a thrift flip project inspired by one in this video or one in any of my thrift flip videos, please tag me or DM me on Instagram at beepworld with a picture because I would absolutely love to see your creations. Oh, also I heard if you do leave a comment, watch another video like one from this entire playlist of other thrift flips and subscribe to the channel. You will find the perfect fabric at the thrift store for your next DIY sewing project that is super cute and actually comfortable.